Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a review on the Ava Media Game Capture HD2. I picked this up a little while ago. If you're interested in seeing the unboxing, I'll put a link about here. Other than that, we'll get on with the review. Starting at just $160, the Ava Media Game Capture HD2 is aimed at the entry level market. It has the ability to record both HDMI and component. The device also has the ability to record to either an internal 2.5 inch drive or an external USB drive. Along the front of the unit here we have the USB 2.0 input, microphone input, headphone input, both using 3.5mm jacks, HDMI activity light, component activity light, record LED and button, power LED and button, and IR sensor. Along the rear of the unit we have the component video input, RCA LNR input, HDMI in, HDMI out, LAN port for connecting to YouTube, and DC in. Removing the cover off the base of the unit exposes the 2.5 inch internal hard disk bay, featuring a SATA 2 power and data connector. Installing a 2.5 inch hard drive is very easy, simply just clip and insert the hard drive, then simply close the bottom cover. The device comes with everything you need to get started, including the capture device itself, as well as the remote control which is the only way of controlling the device, AC to DC power supply, and a HDMI cable to go from the device to your TV. Upon first startup, you'll need to set up the language and other settings of the device. First up you'll be meted with the AVAR Media logo, then the language options of the device. This device supports many other languages apart from English, including French, German and a few others. Once you choose your language, you'll be asked a few other setup questions regarding the device. The first setup question is about the AV pass-through. It's recommended to have this on so you can still use your HDMI based devices while this recording device is switched off. Next you'll need to set up your Ethernet if you want to use it and a storage partition. Once you have completed the initial setup, you'll now be able to use the inbuilt menu into the device. Here I'm using a 40 gig hard drive which gives me a, a little over 4 hours worth of recording time. You have the option of using two different display modes, either being real time mode or standard mode. It is recommended to keep the device in real time mode so you don't have any lag input in your controllers. As well as being able to change the date and time and format the hard drive, you also have a few other options you can choose from. To get the most out of your device, it is recommended that you change the colour range from off to full to get the entire range of colours from the HDMI device. Now this can be limited to the device you have it connected to, but most consoles and TVs work fine with this. You also have the option of choosing recording quality. It is recommended to use best and optimal for both settings. Keep in mind though that this will use plenty more hard drive space than setting it to good or either max. However, this isn't really an issue when using most 2.5 inch hard drives as you will get plenty of recording time out of them. It is also recommended to leave auto saved enabled so you don't lose any important clips. One option which is quite annoying, when the device is first set up it doesn't tell you anything about this and that is a watermark that is in the top left corner of each recording. You won't notice it the first time you do it unless you turn it off first. To do that just go into settings, watermark and then switch it off. Or you have the option of choosing different types of watermarks, such as branded ones or using your own text. However, it is still recommended just to switch it off. The device also comes equipped with its own video editor. Although this is quite simple and very bare bones, it is very useful if you want to record and then upload directly to YouTube without using a computer at all. It is also noted that only files recorded by this device are compatible with this video editor. But this won't bother most people as either you will be using an external video editor or just uploading raw footage straight to YouTube. This is a great device for entry level users including YouTubers. The device itself does have some issues but I think these can be solved in future firmware updates. At the end of the day I give this device a 9.5 out of 10 only limited by the slow operating system it runs on but if you put it into comparison this is a completely PC free device with both hard drive and USB support. 
Also factoring in that this device can upload directly to YouTube, this makes it simple for anyone to use, even if they have no prior knowledge of how to use a video editor or recording device. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the review, and right now, I'll just leave you with some raw footage I captured with the device on the PS3 or 360, whichever one I decide to connect. Other than that, um, thanks for watching the review, and please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Um, I know my videos aren't the best quality, but I think I'm getting better. So, if you liked it, thumbs it up. If you disliked it, thumbs it down, as Linus Tech Tip says. And, yeah, that's about it. See you in another video. No fucking sense. Fuck